So in this video, we're going to talk about the different tools that are used um, by surveyors so you get a, an understanding of things that are used. Um, some of the basic methods that surveyors use, um, think about surveying as, as applied trig. That's essentially all that they're doing is they're just um, doing some simple basic things and then kind of putting all that information together. So surveyors locate points, they measure angles and distances, and then they also measure the differences in elevations. And that's pretty much it. Um, so what we'll do in this class and why we need to understand this stuff is the surveyors are going to be showing us field notes or we actually will go um, out to their field equipment and download data points from them and then be able to take those field notes or data points and create maps um, in Civil 3D. So that's why we kind of need to understand how surveying works so that we understand those, that data that they give us. So when we talk about different types of optical equipment, um, the way that that stuff works that you see here, you have to be able to, to it's a line of sight, that's how it works. So you have to be able to see it. So um, a lot of times to get from point A to point B, you might not be able to see because there's buildings in the way or, or, or whatnot. So you kind of have to do a lot of different setups between point A and point B to get from one spot to the other. So on the left is a thing called a theodolite and we use it to measure both the vertical and horizontal angles. So it looks like maybe what he's measuring there is a vertical angle. So maybe he had it started out level from where he was at and then he um, had it marked there and then he raised it up and he's sliding in maybe the top of a building or something else and he's going to measure that vertical angle. And then over on the right is a piece of equipment called a total station. And what it is, is both electronic and optical surveying equipment. So it still works by line of sight, but it'll do some of the math um, for you. Whereas a theodolite, you kind of have to do some of the math. So theodolites are, you know, not something that you'll probably use if you were to go out and, and work in the field as a surveyor. Most folks have um, a total station or even something a little bit uh, more than that. So here's again an example of some more optical equipment and it again it kind of depends on um, what you're doing. You don't want to have you don't have to have um, really really nice equipment to make this happen but what and what this um, particular piece of equipment is is an automatic level. So um, what you do is you set up your tripod there and you see that in um, gold and silver there at the bottom and then you take the the piece of equipment the auto level and you put it um, on top and screw it down and it's going to just shoot a level straight line across um, and she's looking through there and what she's looking at is a thing called a rod and so somebody's holding a rod and all a rod is is a really fancy uh, vertical uh, we'll say yardstick but it's a specific one used for surveying and she's looking through there and she's going to read a, a mark on that rod and as she goes back and forth taking measurements with a rod and the pe person that they move from point to point, they're able to figure out the elevation between um, where she's at and where the, the rod reading is. So again, it's just kind of um, applied trig um, to do angles and things. And then all she's doing is um, taking measurements and setting up again and, and taking measurements. So um, not too complicated, but it's just kind of taking uh, common sense type things and the, the, what you know about geometry and trig and putting them together um, outside. So again, there's that fancy yardstick over there on the left. The leveling rod is what it's officially called. Um, so again, it's just a fancy yardstick. She's holding it um, totally vertical. That little red thing that you see in her hand um, has a little level bubble in it, just like the level bubble that you'll, you would see um, in a level that maybe you'd have around, around your house. Um, it's just making, she's just making sure that it's not leaning forward or backwards or left and right. She's holding it straight up on that particular point. So you would use this piece of equipment to look through and see that leveling rod. And sometimes those look a little bit different um, and they have a little um, laser beam type mirror prism on top. And sometimes those are called pogo sticks, but all works the same way. Thing there in the middle is called a tripod. 
pretty simple to figure out why that's called a tripod. It's got a hole up in the top of that plate and you can take those instruments like that level that you see right there and um, it has a post on the bottom of the instrument. It goes through that tripod and then you tighten it up on the bottom with a screw. Um, you also have measuring tapes like the one that that guy's using up there and it really is just a really fancy measuring tape. It is made out of a particular type of metal so that you can um, calculate when it's hot outside and that tape expands or when it's cold and it contracts you can um, take into account those changes in the length of the tape and then you also have a, just a little field book which is nothing more than kind of looks like a diary with grid paper on the inside so we all know that we also use GPS technology um, when we survey but you don't always get to use GPS technology when you survey. It just kind of depends on what exactly you're doing because the GPS is not um, as accurate as using the total station and the leveling um, like you saw in the previous slide. So we know that the Department of Defense created um, GPS and then eventually opened it up to civilian use. But just understand that, you know, on a cloudy day, um, GPS isn't going to work. You have to be able to see all those different satellites up there um, in the sky. So it's not necessarily something that you can depend upon all the time. And it's not near as precise as using those benchmark points that we have, those, those metal plates that are in the ground and working off of those. So it all kind of depends on what you're doing and what type of technology you'll use. But if you've seen folks out um, with a setup like that guy um, over there on the left, he has kind of a, a two different things. You'll see the yellow tripod that's kind of in the back there. Um, that is his kind of home base station. Then the other um, silver and blue tripod is just um, strengthening his signal a little bit. And then the pole that he has in his left hand, that's a thing called a pogo stick. Um, and he's got a GPS receiver up there on the top of that. And so he's kind of a one man survey crew. Um, in the previous stuff that we saw, somebody has to hold the pogo stick and somebody has to look through the, the piece of equipment, whether it's a auto level or a total station, to read the readings. This guy's doing things a little bit differently. What he's going to do is he's going to set up his, his home base station there on the yellow tripod, and then he's going to walk around, and um, he's got a little cord that looks like it's a little yellow cord in his left hand, and he's going to get that pogo stick set on whatever the, the point is that he wants to, um, to measure, and uh, he'll click the button, and it will take a GPS reading and then he'll walk to the next point and he'll click the button and it'll take a GPS reading. So um, a lot of times when you'll see those around here is if somebody has maybe you know they need to know where the fence line is on their property. Well that'd be a quick and easy way to do it because you could just walk along with that pogo stick um, you know take every 20 or 30 steps and take a reading and then you'll be able to, to download that data back to um, Civil 3D and it'll pop those those lines out there for you on the page because it's just taking XYZ coordinates. Um, if you were doing different types of surveying that's probably not you know the best route if you were doing property maps. So if you just bought a house and you want to know exactly where your property line is then using that type of setup and using GPS isn't going to work very well because you kind of have to, to look at existing boundaries and um, the property maps and data from the county courthouse and kind of do some reverse engineering to go back and find those boundaries. So it just kind of depends on what type of surveying that you're doing and what type of, of instrument you use. So on the right is another kind of GPS. That's the same kind of little handheld $100 GPS unit that you use to go play geocaching with. And so those are great. They're close, plus or minus about um, Mm, seven or eight feet kind of again it depends on how cloudy or clear of a day it is that you're using but if you need to get close and not super accurate then those work great as well so you know the one on the right is plus or minus um, six or eight feet the one on the left is um, a little bit more high-tech uh, setup there lots more than a hundred dollars of equipment in that picture on the left and um, it is plus or minus about two or three inches. So again, it all depends on, on what you're doing. Um, 
Here is, you know, an example, a higher, you know, better picture of that auto level that we saw the girl looking through. So you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. So we'll start there at the, the base of that where you see those leveling screws. So it will automatically level itself out. And you can see right here is the, the bullseye level in that area right there. Um, and so that just, if you were to look up at the top of it, it's just a circle with a little level bubble in it. And you got to get close and get it level and eventually it'll it'll automatically kind of adjust and level itself um, out but you do have to use those leveling screws and get it pretty close um, and so what you can do with this piece of equipment is um, look through it look through the eye piece it does have a, a ring to adjust it so you can adjust your sights to get it kind of lined up um, before you you know to be able to find because you know it's kind of hard to uh, find that little two inch wide leveling rod if you're looking at it from 200 yards away you can use those sights up at the top that work very similar to to a gun you just you know line up the the front and the back sight on your target and then look through and you can really um, get focused on uh, on what you're seeing in there and all that is is to just be able to let you read the elevation on that leveling rod from a very far distance now in west virginia um, you can't you know can't read too far because again this works line of sight so we have um, lots of of trees and mountains that kind of get in our way but if you were out west you can read for quite a distance on an auto level so definitely takes some skill to uh, learn how to use that well so here's, you know, different ways that we can use to, to locate points. And typically what we do when we locate a point is we start with a previous um, known location or point. And then um, we work off of information, usually um, distance and direction away from that existing point. Or sometimes uh, we use two different angles that are common. So if we look up in the top, um, you'll see method one, which is direction and a distance. So we start at the filled in um, solid point and we go a particular bearing off of off of north and then we go a particular distance. So that's one way to, to make it happen. Or maybe we have a particular line already um, that we've we've found and we're going to measure a particular angle off that existing line and go a particular distance away. And then we also have things called stations and offsets. So a station, um, you can kind of think of it as going down the center line of a, of a road. Um, that's kind of our, our main point of reference. And we go off of that tangent um, to the road at 90 degrees and go a particular distance away. So it's, we'll talk a little bit more about stations when we get to um, highway alignments and how those work. Then in method two, you can kind of use um, two different reference points in that one and go a particular um, bearing or angle off of, of um, north and be able to figure out where those two bearings intersect to find your third point. That's one method. Um, you can also do directions by angle. And again, you have two different um, reference or two different known points there in um, the solid color circles. A solid black circle then you measure a particular interior angle to be able to find that third one and then um, method two on the right um, is using two known points and figuring out uh, an imaginary uh, radius or distance away from those points and finding where those two arcs would intersect so again all of this is just kind of applied trig or applied geometry concepts to be able to um, to locate a point and then method three is using um, two different points maybe one has an angle or a bearing and the other one has a radius or a distance um, and taking those two lines and intersecting them and finding that third point so it's not totally foreign it's just a matter of instead of you know sitting down with your drafting one pencil and paper and and tools you're doing it outside in the real world um, using the, the tools that you've, you've been given out there. So it's not too crazy, but um, just kind of understanding the lingo is, is what we're, we're worried about here. So again, to measure angles, there's lots of different ways you can use those. You can measure horizontal angles using a level, a transit at the autolite, 
all of those different tools will work. Um, same thing with vertical angles. You can use a transit or a theodolite. And typically in those nowadays, you're going to get some type of a digital readout um, to, to tell you exactly what those angles uh, measure out to. And then when we talk about measuring a particular distance, typically you're going to start with some type of known location or plane or benchmark. And you can use a tape, which is what we saw earlier, which is just a fancy, you know, kind of like the measuring tape that you use in your, um, that you get at Lowe's that you use to build your deck. Um, we can also use an electronic distance measurements. And um, those are, you know, something we can use um, on our total station has that. Um, capability as as well. So here's some electronic distance measuring devices or you know you probably maybe if, if you're a hunter or a golfer you've used some type of a, of a range finder before um, that's basically the same type of equipment that we're using. Um, it's pretty can be inexpensive and it has a decent amount of error and obviously the more expensive it is the, the more accurate it is so the picture down there at the bottom is a, a laser electronic distance measuring device and its accuracy is unbelievable how how um, close they are so again it just depends on what you're doing and and how high dollar of a tool um, you need to use to make it work so elevations is probably the most hardest concept um, for you to really understand when it comes to surveying and um, when we measure elevations in surveying we call it leveling and the reason we call it leveling is because we use um, that a level and a rod and so the top example there shows you um, just kind of how it works a little bit so your known point of elevation in this example is over on the left um, so what we're going to do is set up our rod at that known point of elevation and then we take and set up our tripod at some arbitrary point um, halfway between our elevation we want to know and so our unknown point of elevation is over there on the right hand side okay and so we try to just get our tripod somewhere in the middle of those it really doesn't doesn't matter too awful much and we get everything nice and level and set up and then we look through our um, optical or, or laser level whatever it happens to be and we look back toward toward the left toward our known point of elevation and we take a reading okay and so you can see that rod reading over on the left called backside or BS and then we're gonna spin that um, optical or le laser level spin it around on that tripod we've not moved anything yet and we're going to take what's called a foresight measurement and when you do that you get a fs or a foresight reading so when you look at this you've got kind of three different heights going on there you have your rod reading on your back sight that's a particular height then you have your rod reading on your foresight that's a particular height and then eventually you'll know the height of your instrument. So you kind of have to know how tall that instrument is there. And so when you look down at the, um, the setup down in the bottom picture, you can see they started on the left with their benchmark and we know it has a particular elevation. Okay, we set up our, our first transit um, at A and we looked back at that benchmark position one that was the first place we put our rod and we took a reading and that reading was 1.255 and we also took a, a reading to figure out how far away we were from that rod and it was 65 then we spun it around there at point a we took another reading of, called a front or a foresight on that unknown point which happens to be labeled as point two and because of that, we were able to figure out the change in elevation between point one and point two by taking those readings and doing some calculations. It's simple addition and subtraction, but it's knowing how that works to come up with those that information. So we took a backside reading, we spun it around, took a foresight reading on point two. Then we picked up our tripod picked it up off the ground, moved it over to, to B. So now we've got it set in location B. We did a backside reading towards rod setup number two. 
and took a reading of 0.465. We spun it around and took a, moved our rod over to 0.3. And we took a foresight reading there. And then we were able to calculate the distance and change in elevation between 0.2 and 0.3. Then we picked up our tripod to see, took a back sight, spun it around, took a foresight, picked it up again at point D and did a back sight and a foresight. And then you can see there from those calculations, we were able to come up with um, the height at point number five. And so this is kind of how leveling works. And I know this is confusing and you don't quite understand all the numbers. That's okay. It's not your job to understand the numbers. What is your job is to understand those different coordinate points and the fact that the surveyor is going to set up all those different times to be able to get from point one to point five. And you're going to have lots of different spots and data points that, that come off of the, the surveyor's equipment to be able to find those different points on the ground. And I just want to under, you to understand kind of how it works. You don't have to understand the math behind it, but again, it's just simple addition and subtraction to figure out the change in elevation. So there's another example for you. You're going to set up and kind of, again, read the differences in elevation between those rods. So it's just applied geometry. That's all we're doing. And so here's an example of what somebody's field notes might look like. You start with that benchmark. You have HI as the height of your instrument. And then you have a backsight reading. And then you spin it around and you take a foresight reading, so BS and FS. And then you're able to calculate the elevation of those different points. And then you also calculate... Um, the distance or angles and things depending on on what it is you're you're calculating but then you would pick up and move to the next point and take some more readings and you get the idea here and i'll i'll print those out for you and and you can have them to uh, to look at them to understand where those notes came from so we also have an example here of different types of leveling there's optical and laser levels it just depends on how much money you want to spend and um you know how you're going to be um, working. So here in this example, we can have laser leveling can be done alone, but it's easier when you, your rod is equipped with an auto detector. So, you know, it used to be you had to have a three or four person survey crew. Well, now you can technically do it by yourself. Um, it still creates a lot of walking, but what you can do is set up this little guy right here um, in the yellow there, and he'll set on top of a tripod um, and what it does is it will um, use a, a, a laser and kind of auto detect when you get to one point with your rod you can click a button and it's going to take a reading and it will kind of walk around and let you go find the differences in elevation so it all depends on on how much money your particular survey company has but again all you guys are going to see at the end of the day is a bunch of, of data points anyway so when we put all of this information together and we have all these points we're just going to in, in civil 3d we're just going to end up with the points and then we have to go back and label them um, just like we would add dimensions to a, a regular AutoCAD type drawing. We're going to label them so that somebody later on can go out and find that information. So you can see in that top figure 6-1 example um, how they've labeled those. And those are bearings and distances. That's what you're seeing there. Um, so it just, again, it depends on what exactly you're doing and how you're going to label those, those drawings. The one in the bottom uses triangulation to come up with different um, points and establish kind of a, a control network over a region. Again, it depends on what you're doing. But the most common type of thing that we're going to worry about in this class is like what you see there in that top figure. So there's different ways that we um, traverse different things. And depending on how fancy of a survey you're doing, um, how much you close it in. So when we typically do like a property survey, we start at one point and we go around the edges and hopefully we come back to that exact same point. Um, and then again, I'm showing here different types of orders of, of um, how far off you can be when you go around 
and and close out a closed loop traverse and those are again the typically the most often type of of um, surveying that we do and sometimes you do do uh, open traverses but that's not as common um, that we'll have and then here is probably the most common type of, of tool that you'll see surveyors use it's called a total station and it's kind of a combination of a theodolite electronic distance machine it logs your data and it also the more expensive ones have some some surveying software um, built into them and it will hold most of even the cheaper ones will hold over 8,000 points and allows you to take that data straight to a computer the fancier ones um, you can you know take everything off of the total station via Bluetooth to your your mobile device it just kind of depends on on how much of a high dollar and latest and greatest tool that you have but we have lots of these at the college and that's the, you know the easiest thing to use it just is combining um, angle measurements and distance measurements on a level all into to one piece of equipment so again that's the most common thing that you'll see in West Virginia so we'll go ahead and start curve alignment next